بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وعلى أصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد قال عز وجل بعد عود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تخلوا في السلم كافة وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من شهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله فذل بها لسانه واطمأن بها قلبه لم تطعمه النار أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ثم أما بعد Respected and honorable brothers and elders, mothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each and every one of us sitting here the blessing and the ni'mat of Iman this is such a blessing and ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you put every single thing on one side, let's just say one side of a scale, if something could encompass that big, you put money in that, you put wealth in that, you put respect in that, izzat in that, you put everything that could be perceived as something which you're interested in. The best looking clothes, the best looking cars, all the wealth in the world, the most beautiful women in the world, everything one side. And on one side, or in that same scale, with that is a person who doesn't have any Iman whatsoever. But yet has all of these blessings which you and I perceive as being a blessing. And on the other side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, another person on the scale, is an individual who doesn't have nothing at all. No money, no cars, no jewels, no belongings, no izzad, all zillah. But yet that person has an iota, a small amount, an iman equivalent, to, equivalent of a mustard seed. I swear by the qasam of Allah, that individual who has this iota of iman is better than that person who has no iman. Because the thing is, is that if a person doesn't have any iman whatsoever, then in the akhirah, when that person goes, they will meet Allah wa ta'ala, they will not have any success in the hereafter. A person who leaves this world without Iman, they don't, they don't meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way where Allah is happy with them, Allah is pleased with them. So the object of our lives, the object of you coming in this world, the object of you coming here is for one reason and one reason only is how I can understand who is my Allah. The likes of Einstein, the likes of Karl Marx, the likes of... For example, people who won Nobel Prizes, if they understood who is Allah, then all and good. If they haven't understood who is their creator, what is Iman, what is belief, then by the Qasam of Allah, that knowledge serves no benefit and no purpose. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, Man qala la ilaha illallah, khalisan min nafsihi, khalisan min nafsihi, dakhal al-jannah. That individual, that person who from the bottom of his heart says La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except one Allah. Really sincerely, there is no force, there is no push and shove. It hasn't been put down his throat or her throat. They accept it from their heart. Then this individual will ultimately enter Jannah. There is no question about it. This much is just required, come se come, the minimum darajah, the minimum level. If someone he brings iman and who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said further, Jannat is guaranteed. Man shahida an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad al-rasulullah. Fadhalla biha lisanuhu. Watma anna biha qalbuhu. Lam tat'amhu an-nar. That individual, whosoever, that person, whoever says La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship but Allah wa ta'ala. 
Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is Allah's last and final messenger. Yani the basic level of Iman. Basic level of Iman. فَذَلَّ بِهَا لِسَانُهُ But they completely bring this. فَذَلَّ يَعْنِي إِنْقَادَ They submit themselves, they subdue themselves. Anything what Allah says goes. فَذَلَّ بِهَا This is something which they, which they have full belief over. وَطْمَأَنَّ بِهَا قَلْبُهُ Full yaqeen. Okay, what I'm saying is the absolute truth. It mentions in the, in the hadith further, لَمْ تَطْعَمْهُ النَّارَ that person, fire, can never touch this individual. This person is given safety and assurance by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What a blessing, Allahu Akbar. What a blessing, what a ni'mah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave you and I. Imagine this, how much we, we invest on our worldly lives. Put it into context. How much you invested on your worldly life that you left your family in another country. You came here. Your mother and father may be abroad. Your brother and sister may be abroad, but you left them. Because you said, I've got to earn money. So we've given that importance to the worldly life. What have you taken? Look, other than being a Rasmi Muslim, meaning traditional Muslims, what have we done for the sake of this Iman that Allah has given us? What have we done? I know, you know, for example, I met an individual, and, and mashallah, I, I, you know, I salute his enthusiasm. He goes, Alhamdulillah, you know, Manana, my son, mashallah, he prays five times a day and he fasts in the month of Ramadan. And, I, you know, what do you say to I said, mashallah, that's very good, but reality is, what, what's he supposed to do? He's a Muslim, right? But on, just on the basic levels, we feel so much itminan. Okay? Alhamdulillah, my son prays five times a day. My daughter prays five times a day. That's the, without these actions, can you even, are you even able to call yourself a Muslim by your actions? You know, so this is, we're in a predicament. We're in a situation. This value and ni'mah of Iman, unfortunately, it's not really valued by us as much. Yeah, we say we're Muslims and alhamdulillah. But the reality is, there are many a people now, not from, forget non-Muslims. It's the Muslims themselves who are being the biggest obstacle now to the lives of Muslims. You, anyone see that program on TV a couple of weeks ago? No? Uh, we should be aware of such things anyway. I don't have a TV at my house. But yeah, I did follow up what was going on. People from the Muslim community turning away from their faith. It's becoming an act, it's becoming, well, the news of the world was that. It's a pandemic, it's a crisis in our communities. We can live like ostriches and put our hands in the, heads in the sand and say, no, 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 it's not like that. You are over, overestimating the situation. A friend of mine, a friend of mine, you see, no disrespect, right, but those people who want to always criticize efforts of being, if you're not doing nothing yourself, you have no right to criticize. Let me mention that very, very clearly, then you'll appreciate what I'm about to say next. I know there's different methodologies. We're not saying only one way will work. Different fikr, different manhaj, different tariqahs. But alhamdulillah, brother Jamaat brother went, he went to Kuro Cardiff. Now some of us may say, you know, it's very basic, only work on Muslims, this and that. Let's leave that for another debate. Let's leave that for another time. Let's ask question, who of us went to Cardiff and gave da'wah? None of us. But this brother, alhamdulillah, he went approximately two months he was there. Knocking door to door trying to find Muslims. He knocked on a door. He said, I knocked on someone's door and I asked him, I said, um, I heard Muslims there. He goes, yeah, yeah, my brother's a Muslim. My brother's a Muslim. So he goes, how about yourself? He goes, well, I'm 50% Muslim and 50% a kafir. This is exact words. Now, another thing, the word kafir is not a derogatory word. It means someone who disbelieves. I'm not buying into that, that it's a disrespectful word. Like how you would, God forbid, call a black person an N-word or, or an Asian person a P-word or something ridiculous like this. That is not true, it's false. <coughs> person, kafir is someone who disbelieves. What, more, what, what do you want to say there? That's the Arabic word for it. Anyway, sideline from that. The person gave his response, I'm half and half. I'm neither here, I'm neither there. Subhanallah, that's just one instance. He said to me, I met approximately 100 people who turned away from Iman. Now you may think that's exaggerated. It's not, believe me. You, wallahi, you have not gone where I have gone as well. I've seen things with my own eyes and this is why when we mention it to the people, it's not scaremongering. It's a reality. That what happens is we unfortunately haven't made any effort. We settle with the very, very basics within our within. within. Very, very basics. <coughs> Ask yourself as a parent, what me'yar and what level did you keep for your children? All right, alhamdulillah, we bought them their halal lamb chops and their chicken wings and so on. MashaAllah, let's keep 
food because even if a, it's funny because a taxi driver friend he said to me when I checked this out I picked up four Muslim boys they were all drunk and the guy goes bruv take me to get a halal kebab yeah a halal kebab those were a surah kebab what's the difference? But you, you, if Allah rent kare, we, our dietary requirements were very strict. We say, no, 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 it's only got to be halal. But the guy, subhanAllah, he's gone out for a drink and now he wants to go and have halal food. I mean, don't get me wrong, chalo, kam si kam, alhamdulillah. But the reality is, when it comes to dietary requirements, that's where you can say we're a bit strict. But other than that, what is the level of education that we gave our children? What discussions take place in our homes? How are our children in relation to the deen of Allah? What, are the th what is the theme within our house? How, how do we, subhanAllah, what, what is our thinking? How do, we, how do we communicate with the wife? How do we communicate with the children? Are our, do your children freely discuss Islam with you? Do they look at it as something important? Something that I should do because I'm a Muslim? Allah has given me the ni'mah and blessing of Iman. Or is it the fact that I'm just born into a Muslim family? Saying Muslims do. A lot of people, it would be the latter. They are not, they're not, they're not, they're not aware, they don't know what it is to be a Muslim. And because we've accepted such a basic level, okay, my child can read Quran and he can pray Salah. Or she can read Salah and read Quran. Let me tell you, I once, I went to a doctor, an Egyptian doctor who was Christian. I had something wrong, I went to the hospital. And I had an Arabic book in my hand, Ilm al -Sira. It was the rules and laws behind sarf and rhetoric and balagha and so on. I went there and he goes to me, Ilm al -Sira. He goes to me, Tikalam al Arabi, do you speak Arabic? I said, Yeah, I can, but I speak Fusha, I don't speak any other dialect. I find it very difficult. So, if someone from North Africa, say the Khaliji, if they speak their dialect, I, re I can't follow. But if you speak Fusha, I kind of get it. I can watch a news channel, but I can't speak to a person. So then we had a little discussion and a dialogue and khalas, it ended there. The reality was, he's Arabic, he basically spun around me in circles. He spoke ten times better Arabic than me. His Arabic was much... I, I used to work with a woman, in the, in the, she was a minister in the prison. She was part of our religious affairs team. She was from Iraq and wallahi, she spoke Fusha Arabic and Ghair Fusha Arabic. So just speaking or reading Arabic isn't sufficient. There's a university, I, I, we don't want to start promoting people, but the, the person who's teaching Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, he's not Muslim, he's a Ghalib and I think he's Christian or Jewish. My point is this, simply learning how to read something doesn't mean that, mashallah, we've achieved a lot. So this is one of the first things we have to make islah of ourselves. Okay, if you question ourselves, really, what have we done for the Iman for our children? Have they been explo to exposed? Have they been in, got that environment of being around them? Have they been to, and this is why if I, if I add as well, you know the madaris which we have, the madrasa system, is wallahi gold. You go Brazil, go Brazil. A friend of mine, he recently went Brazil. Again, for da'wah purposes. He went in Tabligh, he went in Jamaat there. And he goes to me, Mulana, I met 50 people, Murtad, 50. Five zero people that have come turn away from Islam. And that's nothing. In the 60s, there was a mass exodus. People left from Lebanon and Palestine and Sham in those times, in the 60s. And they flocked to there, approximately 2 million people. Approximately how many? 2 million. But then the two year 2000 census, it shows that there's only 60,000 Muslims. Where did they go? Should they just go again? Or did they just, go, just vanish in Tathina? No, no, it wasn't. They've maintained the names of Tariq and Bilal and so on. But they all turned away from Islam. 1.9 million people left the deen of Allah. This is why the madrasa system which we have, where we send the children to, for them to learn Islam, it's not about how quickly my child can finish Quran. Our number one concern should be, what will my child achieve? Will they keep their Iman? Will, they, will their Iman be intact? Tell me what Islam, the, the, the ilm, that is the most important thing. You can read Quran, I can get you a tutor today. Christian woman, she will teach you Arabic. It's not an issue of teaching Quran. It's not a teach, it's issue of teaching Arabic. Yeah, there's methodologies and we don't dispute that. But the reality is, what level of knowledge have we got? What have we passed on to our children? When we sit with our families, TV is on 24-7. They're the same tools which are causing the damage in the Muslim homes, but yet we've got them on. 
We haven't taken time out to educate our children. The majority of calls I get are about jadu and jinn. Not about iman. Not about issues of education. Well, I think there's a jinn in my house. I've got an issue with this. Now because people heard I do marriage counselling, that's the new flex now. I'm getting a lot of calls for that. But the reality is, majority are always dawiz related, jinn related. This is a big issue within communities. The iman of our children is the biggest issue in this community now. And not just now, it's been from a long time. It's been from a long time. Because now it's, it's ex-Muslims, non-people that have turned away from Islam. These are the people now that are standing up and opposing Islam. We don't need anyone who was not born a Muslim to do it. We have our own people who turn away. Now they're going to be the biggest challenge. And they are the biggest challenge at the moment. Why do people turn away? And you look at some of the reasons, subhanAllah, it's quite ajeeb. There are multiple things. No more, there are multiple things that can cause it. And I did mention one of them was poor parenting. Poor parenting. We send our children to the universities. And now one person who I know, subhanAllah, you know, he... You know, and we... Look, I studied in the university. I've got a degree. But whenever we had doubts or questions, we used to run to the ulama and someone who I trusted. I was never a, a pick and mix molvi bit from here, bit from there, you know, I, I, I've got this issue and I, I, I'm in doubt. So let me ask Masala to every Malvi I know in my contact list to get the Masala I want to hear. No, that's not Deen, that's Nafs. Hold on to someone who you have I'timad on. Ittila, ittiba. Two things are necessary for, the, for your own reformation. Ittila, yani in Arabic means to tell them of your situation. And ittiba, if they tell you, brother, look, my opinion is do this. If you trust them, then hold on to their opinion. Rather being surfing and look, you'll find an opinion everywhere. My Ustad, he was traveling and he was traveling next to a brother and they were served a meal. And he said, can I have the vegetarian meal, please? And this was on the aircraft. So he took the vegetarian meal and the gentleman next to him took the, the meat. And he said to him, he goes, brother, this isn't even halal. He goes, he goes, wallahi ma fi mushkil. Bismillah, Allah. Started blowing on the chicken. He goes, kullu halal. It's all halal now. Brother, you think it's a joke or something? Where did you get these, this deen from? No, 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 I've got a fatwa from a sheikh of mine. You'll find people telling you all kinds of stuff. The reality is we're in a time of confusion. This is why it's khatra and dangerous. When you surf and go left, right and center, then you're responsible because you were the one that did that. Rather, if you trust somebody and say, right, you're a person who I put trust in, khalas, that's the end of story. I'm not saying difference of opinion can't exist, there can always be, and we can always differ. There's two things, there's usul and there's furur. This is very technical, but there are things which cannot budge. Our aqeedah that there's one Allah, our aqeedah that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is the last prophet, our aqeedah that Quran is haq, kitab of Allah, munazal min indillah, the last book of Allah. We understand that jannah din jannah jahannam are haq, qul sirat is haq. There are so many things about aqeedah and belief, we can't budge from that. But then there are things, whether to tie the hands here or here, whether to raise the hands before ruku or not, whether to say amin loudly or not. Take it, it's okay, both are cool. Doesn't, someone doesn't become a, a, a disbeliever because he doesn't do rafa'i then. Someone doesn't become a disbeliever because he doesn't say amin loudly. If you want to shout amin loudly, balki scream it so that our angels in the sky can hear you. No problem, do it. It doesn't make no difference whether you do or you don't. But we've made these things different amongst ourselves. This is, this is our second, my second point. We debate, we debate, but over frivolous issues. Over issues which are called furur. In English, they refer to them as <coughs> one is foundation, which is iman, peripheral issues. We doubt, we debate over peripheral issues. By why haven't you got a dopey on your head? La hawla wa la quda illa billah. Why haven't you got, why aren't you putting your trousers above your ankles? La hawla wa la quda illa billah. Oh, by, look, fururi things, let's leave. Or suli things, we all agree on. These are things which we all agree. Even the Quran says, Ya ahl al kitab, ta'alaw ila kalimatin, sawa'in baynana wa baynakum, alla na'bud illa Allah. Allah is even saying to the Prophet Sallallahu tell these, tell the, the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, let's come to a common word. Let's let, what is that common word? That we're not going to worship anyone except Allah Tabarakul Ta'ala. Bas. But Nabi Sallallahu was told, tell the people that you'll work with them, you'll talk with them. Dialogue will be even with the non-Muslims. A Malvi friend, a guy, a guy who I know, he went to a, to a wedding somewhere. And subhanAllah, he went to give someone salam and the guy pulled his hands back. He goes, Oi, nay. Nay, nay. Oh, sada, salam, tuadinaltaniwarna. In, in translated, that my salam can't be with you. It's not compatible. You're this and I'm this. This is what we've caused divisions in our deen. So the bigger things we've, 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 broke, we've brushed past. 
and we've debated on peripheral issues. Let me hasten to add, they are important, but they're not so important to cause differences amongst ourselves. Well, we don't even tolerate seeing the next man's face because he's of a different jama'ah, or he's of a different thinking, or he perhaps is involved in a certain effort of da'wah which we don't regard as important enough. Look, if the person is openly propagating kufr and shirk, then by all means. If the person is doing something which we regard as ghayr afdal, not as important as something else, then that's your prerogative, that's not the effort. You shouldn't bring that on a personal level. We bring it on a personal level with one another, personal. And our children are confused, they don't know what's going on. While they're losing their iman, we're debating over small peripheral issues. Exactly like what happened. The Mongols were outside Iraq, ready to attack and invade Iraq. In one night, 100,000 people got slaughtered. In one night. And what were they debating? They were debating whether the Quran is makhluk or not. There were bigger things to debate at that time. There were bigger things to look at at that time. People were outside ready to rush over your entire empire. And that's exactly what happened. Where's the discussions of Quran now? People, Gajah and Muli were getting whacked all over the place. And this is exactly our story. Pick up history and read. Pick up history and read. What happened with Spain? The same thing, people's Iman started dropping. People's Iman started dropping. Where is the fikr to revive the effort amongst Muslims? Who is there to go and knock on the door and cry to the Muslim? Well, apparently it was a bit that happened until a few years ago. But now it's, there is, no, no, we're not giving that one. Now it's called Islah. By call it Islah, call it whatever you want to call it. The issue is this, while we are arguing over a smaller issue, there's a bigger issue out there. People are moving away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People don't know who is Allah. Take a look in our gatherings. There were four Muslim brothers at the bus stop now, a little while ago. Where are they going? Going to work. Where's Jummah? Where's Jummah in the life of those Muslims? Deen isn't important. It's not nothing which is of importance. I asked the parents whose homes they're in. Why didn't the parents say, why are you going to pray Jummah first? Job is less important or more important or your work is. But this is what Mi'yad we've made. And when we talk like these people say, nah, nah, man, your, this deen is too tough. No, it doesn't fit with our desires. That's the problem. Mold yourself around Deen. Don't expect Deen to mold around you. Even the Prophet ﷺ was ordered as well. Give da'wah completely. Don't, you know, there was no corner cutting for no one. Subhanallah. We are seeing in our midst, we are seeing, this is not a joke. I know people in Crowley who have got these issues. They're moving away from Deen. <coughs> Unfortunately, it's an issue which we've got. There, if you deny something and you say, no, I don't believe this is part of Islam. You're denying something in Islam. This is very big khatra for this individual. This person's iman is in jeopardy. Do we have to tell our children to read salah? Tell them to be Muslims or do they happily do it themselves? We need to think then, we've got an issue on our hands and how do we resolve it? We need to fix up and sort something out. It starts off slow but we'll move towards in the right direction if we have the right figure one of the reasons being as well additionally we haven't understood who is Allah <clears throat> we haven't understood who is Allah I've studied about all theories about Islam uh, about, about, about Western education philosophy and so on but if you study these things with a good intention there will also be an element of reward but we don't we, we completely submerge ourselves in everything but Islam and then have doubts in Islam well, shouldn't you have given yourself some justice and kept a balance? If you study Deen three hours a day, then study Dunya three hours a day, the secular education, which is all good. I'm not, I'm not against it. I studied something to do with banking and finance. I'm not against it. The reality is this. If you're going to give preference to something so much, then don't cry when issues come knocking on our own door. And I'm not saying all your children should become ulama. I'm not for that. Listen to this very carefully. I'm glad the brother's got a recording. I am not advocating everyone needs to become a Mulvi. I'm not advocating that. I'm advocating that Muslims should remain with their Iman. Now, whatever it takes to get that, do it. But pursue worldly education, pursue business, pursue your jobs, pursue your careers. But be the best in your career. Don't be a, a person on the backstage. Go advance. I'm for that. I'm for academics. I'm for advancement. I'm for tarqi uh, and, 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 and uh, increase. But the thing I'm not for is if there's two, a, a choice between the two and you have to make a decision. Don't be so short-sighted and choose that thing which you temporarily will have some benefit from. In the longer harm in the akhirah. People haven't under... How kind is Allah? 
Ask your children, how kind is Allah? People don't forget, no one knows even any Quran, any Hadith, nothing. SubhanAllah. We're unaware. So let me share just one or two Hadith because time is up. Every single day, every single day, Allah Ta'ala gives a verbal capability to some makhluk. One of them is the sea. مَا مِنْ بَحْ مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ إِلَّا وَالْبَحْرُ يَسْتَأْذِنَ رَبَّهُ أَنْ يُغْرِقَ بْنَ آدَمِ Every day, there's not a day that doesn't go by when the oceans of the earth besiege Allah and say, Ya Allah, give us the ijazah, we will, we will flood and we will drown these people. And يُغْرِقَ بْنَ آدَمِ We will completely drown them. This is the, Allah gives a verbal capability. Now how does it talk? How, by, I don't know, ask Allah on the day of Qiyamah. I don't know, don't ask me that question. I bring Iman in Allah and Allah's Rasul, that's enough for me. How the kafir, this and that, it's not my business to ask this at this particular juncture. And not only that, the Malaika also ask Allah as well. They say, Ya Allah, these people have caused too much fitna. Let us also drown them as well. Let us bring adhab quickly to these people. What does Allah Taala reply? فيقول الله تبارك وتعالى دعوا أبدي أنا أعلم به إذ أنشأته من الأرض إن كان عبدكم فشأنكم به وإن كان عبدي فمني وإلي الله أكبر. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says look I know of the condition of my slave because I created him I know what he's about. If he's your servant and if he's your, remember this is Allah saying this now in Jawab to the Malaika. If he's your servant, فشأ نكم به تو يانا تراكم. If he's your slave, then you do as you please. وَإِنْ كَانَ عَبْدِي فَمِنِّي وَإِلَيَّ But if he's my servant, then leave him to me. You know like in Urdu, right? For example, you'll understand a bit better. Or a bit, someone, you, two brothers are having a dispute and someone comes into, in, in between. What do you say to them? بَيْ يَمَرَ بَرَسْنَ الْمَامَلَ بِيشْمَ نَعَوْ كِيُوْ مَرَوْ نَا أَسَيَنَا we, we say, sorry, don't get involved. Please, this is a personal issue between two brothers. Look at the word of the hadith. This, if you understand a bit of Arabic, in kana abdi fa sha'nukum bi wa in kana abdi fa minni wa ilayya. Then it's between me and my servant. Which you haven't got no right to get involved. This is between me and him. Subhanallah. What does Allah Ta'ala say? Abdi wa izzati wa jalali. In atani laylan qabiltu wa in atani naharan qabiltu. In idha taqarraba ilayya, taqarraba ilayya shibran dhira'an taqarrabtu. تقربت إليه ذراع وإن تقرب إلي ذراع تقربت إليه بع وإذا مشى إلي هرولت عليه إن استغفرني غفرته وإن استقالني أقلته وإن تاب علي تبت عليه الله أكبر والله if you can really appreciate these words and I finish up on these just these last words where Allah سبحانه وتعالى he says oh my slave but I swear by my izzat and I swear I swear by my izzat and grandeur my my status if you were to come to me at any part in the night time, I'd forgive you. And if you were to come to me at any part in the day, I would forgive you. If you come to me just a little hand span, and I'll come to you an arm's length. And if you come to me an arm's length, I'll come to you double arm's length. If you walk to me, I'll run to you. Seek forgiveness from me. I will forgive you. Seek pardon from me. I will pardon you. Turn to me in repentance and say, Ya Allah, meri tawbah, and I'll even accept your tawbah. How many of us seek tawbah from Allah? How many ask Allah? Allah mentions, If your sins reach the skies, the clouds in the sky, and you'll say, Ya Allah, please forgive me. I've made a lot of mistakes. I really ask for forgiveness. I'll even forgive you because it doesn't make no difference to me. My dear brothers, that Allah is not there looking to punish us. He's looking to forgive us. We've turned away from Allah. We haven't understood who is Allah. This is the biggest crisis within this ummah. We've understood iPhone. I've understood Samsung. I've understood everything. I've understood bachelors and masters. I have not understood who is my Allah. May Allah Ta'ala give us the understanding of who that Allah is. May Allah Ta'ala give us the true ta'aluk and connection with Allah as it ought to be. Even Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, Oh Allah. He said, oh Allah, you are so great. How are you so great? Oh Allah, you are so great. I can't praise you enough. You are only as good as you have praised yourself. We haven't understood who you are. 
وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ Allah is saying, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ They have not understood who their Allah is. My dear brothers, we need to make a U-turn today. We need to make a turn to Allah today. We need a turn to Allah before we return to Allah. Because when we return to Allah, there'll be a never a second chance again. May Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq to protect our iman and the iman of our children. Say Ameen. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala utilize us for the in guidance of others, insha'Allah. And may Allah take us from this dunya in a way where our iman is in hifadah and salamat, and also in a way where Allah gives us entry into Jannah, insha'Allah. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma. I should apologize. I was supposed to stop a few couple of minutes ago. So humble apologies.